everybody, I am Conquering History Games, and welcome back to live stream number 9 in my We the Revolution campaign series. Uh, today is a very special and a very somber episode of We the Revolution, uh, because it is not just July 28th in our world, in our, in our current timeline, but it, it is also the 10th of Fermador, uh, which is the day that uh, Robespierre was arrested. Technically, he was arrested on this day because uh, it was like 2 in the morning, so that's after midnight. I'm going to count it. Um, and he was uh, swiftly put to trial and executed for his crimes of being uh, too based. And, uh, and kicking too much royalist ass, uh, along with uh, his dear friends and other uh, uh, unbelievably uh, epic poggers, revolutionaries, uh, such as Augustine Saint Jus, aka the Angel of Death, and of course, uh, the one, the only, Georges, they see me rolling, they hating, Couton. And so we, th we dedicate this live stream to the memory of them and, of course, as always, to the brave fighters of the Mujahideen. So, um, I don't think we're going to hit Thermidor today, though. <laughs> um, although, maybe, because aren't we already in 1794 and that's when the Thermidorian reaction happened, so it's possible. Um, anyway, let's, uh, those are... Get my headphones on here, and then we're going to uh, get playing. Uh, hello there, Mr. X and Socialist and everybody else. Uh, so did the hideout thing, what was this grant immunity? Your agents will be immune to actions of patrol. Lower the fervor in sections. Okay, this at least is somewhat useful, um, but we're not going to do it. I think we're done here. It's in the day. You have your copy of Robespierre's speeches on my side, your side. That's funny because I do too. <laughs> well, I don't think it's all his speeches, but it's quite a few of his uh, his speeches at least. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Mm -hmm. All right. So, here we go. Uh, today's case. Uh, I would just, though, like to begin by, you know, what I'm going to be trying to do in today's uh, stream. I'm going to try to uh, keep popping up, uh, putting out some, um, you know, some little quotes from uh, from Robespierre here and there. So this is this is from his speech in which he discusses the, uh, the principles of revolutionary government. This was a, uh, a speech he gave on Christmas Day. Um, December 25th, 1793. But more importantly, it was on the 5th Nouveau of year 2. So, the authority, of the, like, the authority of the National Convention needs to be respected by all Europe. It is to degrade it, it is to wipe it out that the tyrants are exhausting all the resources of their policy and lavishing their treasure. The Convention needs to take a firm resolution to prefer its own government to that of the London Cabinet in all the courts in Europe. For if it does not govern, the tyrants will reign. And what advantages would they not have in this war of ruse and corruption they are waging on the Republic? All the vices are fighting for them. The Republic only has virtues on its side. Virtues are simple, modest, poor, often ignorant, sometimes rough. They are the prerogative of the unfortunate and the heritage of the people. Vices are surrounded by every treasure, armed with all the charms of luxury and all the lures of perfidy. They are flanked by all the dangerous talents used for crime. With what depth of artistry the tyrants turn against us, I will not say our passions and weaknesses, but our very patriotism. All right. Um, anyway, Oh, hold on. This is this is not just real quick. I just he he was always so vivid in his speeches. Robespierre. There's another line in the speech, uh, just just like one sentence. I'm gonna read here where he says, "For some times the foreign courts have been vomiting over France all the cunning scoundrels they have in their pay. 
Just that, that visual imagery. They're vomiting their spies on us. Expelling them. All right. Uh, wait, we have an important little uh, notice here. Oh, speaking of the man himself, Maximilian Robespierre. Uh, both as an individual and a representative of the National Convention, I am deeply saddened by your son's death and wish to offer my condolences. What a guy. What a great guy. Uh, oh gosh, it looks like we have quite a few uh, things here. Hold on, I'm trying to... Okay, what the hell? All right, all right, all right, whatever, whatever. I think these are all condolence letters. Oh my god. Oh, I'm trying to... Okay, here we go, here we go. So we read the ropes PR one. Uh, okay, here we go, here we go. Deal Fidel, the guard is at your service if you wish to shake down the whole of Paris to find those bastards. Only a madman would attack someone's child. So that's Francis Henriot, that's our head of the, uh, the National Guard. Over here we have, Dear citizen, in times like this we can only entrust ourselves to God's will. We pray for your family. That's uh, Jean-Baptiste Gobel. Uh, oh my gosh, I think that's a real person. I might need to actually look this one up. I might be thinking of Colbert, actually. But I th yeah, because there was definitely a Jean-Baptiste Colbert. But, uh, let me see. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy was real. Ah, uh, right, because they're not using his full name. That's what confused me. So his full name is Jean-Baptiste Joseph. Gobel. And of course, he's talking about God's will. He was a cleric. Um, so, basically, he was the Archbishop of, uh, of Paris. This is, we're talking about the guy on the far left here right now, Jean-Baptiste Gobel. And so what kind of sets him apart from a lot of the... Um, a lot of the other bishops at this time is he actually did take the, uh, the oath... Uh, that was supposed to accompany the civil constitution of the clergy. So that was basically this, uh, it was, it was long story short, the constitution of the clergy basically said the French Catholic church would be subservient to the French government. In essence, you know, the national convention and whatnot. Um, needless to say, the Catholic church as a whole, uh, was not very happy with this idea. And, um, anyway, yeah, but Gobel was one who, uh, who got on board. He, he, yeah. Um, so. Alright, what else we got here? Damn it. Damn it. Okay, here we go. We're gonna move to the right, the ones that I've already done. Yeah, this is terribly awkward. Dear Fidel. Okay, I already read that one. So let's move that over. Like so, okay. Have the first condolences arrived yet? One of the authors is surely responsible for the attack on your family. Why? <laughs> anyway, a friend who could, fuck's sake. This is so awkward. There we go. Friend, who could have done something so terrible? I shall meet you soon, my friend, Jacques-Louis David. And then finally, I think finally, Dear citizen, I cannot describe how seated I am by the hideous crime on your family. France is by your side. Georges Dacton. Okay. So, we read those. Uh, anything else in here? We're not, probably not going to get any more of the pa 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 uh, things. What with, um, you know, my youngest son being dead. But how about we uh, take a look here at the new case? Shall we? Okay. Um, so, uh, Marie Sylvie Pache, the daughter of the mayor of Paris. Oh, right, right. Uh, this. So we told her we were going to let her live. We also told her uh, dad that. He's dead now. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, has been accused of the cold-blooded murder of Beatrice Caron. The arrest was made in an abandoned house on Rue saint Mao, where the defendant supposedly copulated with the victim many times. Nice. Good for them. Uh, the shack was perfectly suited for Trius. Trius. I'm never quite sure how to pronounce that. If it's Trius or Tris. Like a sexual Trist or a sexual Triest. Um, intended to keep a secret. The detention took place 
with the personal assistance of Judge Fidel. According to the guard, the defendant was found standing over the deceased with a blood-stained kitchen knife in her hand, as trained to be the murder weapon. The defendant put up no resistance during her arrest. Investigators have established that the defendant and the victim knew each other for a long time. They were seen together often. However, acquaintances of the defendant suggest that she preferred not to boast about her father's position or even her real name. Beatrice, on the other hand, in the absence of the defendant, allegedly bragged about, excuse my language, Monsieur Le Judge, she bragged about having often fucked the defendant. Oh, yep, and as you can see the little picture for often fuck, it's holding hands, because that's how you impregnate people. Um, I suspect this is just the silly prattle of a young girl. Nevertheless, I'm reporting what I have heard. There are plenty, learned, excuse me, there are plenty of assumptions and gossips in this case. Beatrice had some connections with the Muscadins, but we were unable to learn anything of value from them. Rumor has it she was very much like this mob of delinquents, young, unruly, disrespectful of authority, and depraving the sober-minded youth. At the same time, she usurped the right to call herself a defender of the people. Beatrice was a musket into the core, and it would appear the defendant wished to become much the same. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, then. Let's get to it. Although many of you know this face already, I call upon the defendant to introduce herself. Marie Sylvie Pache, daughter. Yes, we know. Okay. Uh, all right. Intimate relationship. Intimate. 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 Um. Uh. Would that be? Uh. I don't know. We might need to come back to that. Concealing identity. That would be personality. Uh. Knife in the hand. That's definitely an accusation. Hmm. I don't remember there being a judge's assistance thing. Okay, abandoned house. That's gotta be crime scene, right? Okay. Uh. Wait, 3,000 francs? I don't remember that. Intimate relation. Would that be motive? Nope. Fuck me. Alright. Well, yeah, it's accusation because we're we're saying she was like part of it. Fuck! Thought the blackmail was accusation. Uh, sh no, she was getting blackmailed. That was it. Okay, cold-blooded murder. Shh. Accusation. Okay, concealing identity. If you keep your promise to Pacher, will you fall before the bloodlust of your family? I guess that's what we're going to find out. People in the chat, you could try to persuade me one way or the other, but no guarantees. In fact, I think I've already made my decision. No resistance. Would that be extenuating circumstances? Kind of showing that she didn't do it? Okay, ah, oh, it's all guillotine, just all the way down, fuck. Okay, no, 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 there's a couple of happy ones. Do you know how I learned of your meeting? I had begun to wonder about that in the prison cell. Beatrice Caron testified she was an Austrian spy, and that she kept in touch with you only to spy on your father. Kept in touch with her, more like touched in her. That is absurd. It is not easy to accept the truth. You seek to turn our affections into a mere political game. Love is on a somewhat different level. By the way, if you want to see, in my personal opinion, some terrific lesbian sex scenes in film, I do recommend uh, the movie Blue is the Warmest Color. Uh, good stuff. Um, and it's a French film. That's why I thought of it right now. Um... Disgusting! They... They loved each other so much that one ended up killing the other. It is you who are disgusting, you and your parochial world. The revolution has failed at opening your m minds, hearts, and souls. Uh, please describe your feelings when you got the letter from Beatrice. 
Um, my heart broke. So we have confirmation of the motive. You are truly ingenious, investigators. Finally, you have grasped what I have been telling you from the beginning. Beatrice was very dear to me. Like, don't let us say it out loud. Please, spare us the details. But of course, because your holy hearts could not stand the idea of two women being together. Where is that freedom and equality of yours? To the best of your knowledge, how would the victim have spent the money she demanded? I do not know. We talked little about money. We talked about pain, mainly my own. You supposedly knew the victim very well? We did not talk about money. We were not planning a future together. Everyone knows that would not be possible. And for a bit, eh? Away with this abomination. As you can see, that money would likely have been used to further develop the Austrian spy ring in France. What makes you think so? You are not here to ask questions. Alright. Uh, did the defendant plead guilty? I guess so, technically. Was her act counter-revolutionary in nature? I wouldn't say so. Did the Muskins not recognize the defendant? Why? Oh, fuck. Uh, oh, yeah, she. Could, I guess it would conceal her true name. Yeah, she would lie about her name. Where did the accused get the murder weapon? Uh, I don't know, from home? I'm not entirely sure what those do anyway. Okay, I, f I find the defendant not guilty. Oh boy, the common folk are not gonna like this one. All right. Oh, more of these. Okay, Corinne Chardin, the laundress. That I hope there's something where I can fuck up a mechanic. I was getting screwed by him today. The laundress Corinne Chardin killed her neighbor, Theophile Portier, with a kitchen knife. The tragedy took place in Chardin's apartment. She claims that Chardin had attacked her, but there are neither witnesses nor evidence to prove it. Hmm... I don't know. She was in... He was in her apartment. So she had invited him in. Uh... Theophile Poitier took place in Chardin's apartment. Claims that Chardin attacked her. There are neither witnesses nor evidence to prove it. Hmm... Oh, Executor. Okay. The salt merchant Alvera Pretre ordered some special empty weights, which he used to weigh salt. His customers lost 50 grams for each kilo they bought. He was not only tricking his customers, but also committing fiscal fraud. Oh! Oh! Execute this motherfucker! You know what? He doesn't deserve the guillotine. We're gonna bring back the rack for his ass. Fuck that guy. Now I feel bad at executing Corinne, because that almost equivocates her crime with his. Murder is nothing compared to being a piece of shit. Oh, mother financial fraud bitch. Ugh. Fuck you, Olivier. I've taken your testimony and find you not guilty. But you caught her red-handed yourself. What? Why? The judge surely prefers boys himself and sympathizes with her. What? Oh, they're saying I'm gay, so I sympathize with lesbians. But you see, the greatest trick the LGBT community ever pulled was claiming that they don't all hate each other. <laughs> anyway. Four, four, very nice. Boop, 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 boop. That's a bit quiet. Thought there'd be some reaction to that. When did you meet my brother, Bruno? We served in the same brigade, and I owe him my life. He put himself in danger, dragging me away from the battlefield when I was injured. 
It was not so lucky himself. We have dedicated far too much time to that man already, both in our thoughts and our stories. I want to know. Ours do a... A stray bullet killed him. I never even got the chance to thank him for saving my life. I can assure you that we were friends. Hmm. Oh, new part of the game! Battles! Battles are dynamic fights between two hostile armors. They include infantry, rifles, and artillery, king of the battle. Enemy generals ha may have different preferences regarding their tactics. Each tactic defines the way the attack or defense is conducted and affects the minor bonuses that your troops will receive in battle. The balance of power during battles may change. Watch the respective bars and use the information you gain to choose the right tactics. Hmm. Our rear guard clashed with the enemy and lost. They forced their way into the camp where the wounded were being tended to. We had to grab our weapons. So this is, uh, I guess, a tutorial of it uh, or something. Um... I need to get some water here. <sighs> I need to get more water. That was sweating a lot today. I think I was sweating more than I do at work. I kind of accidentally had the day off, not in a good way. So we can do frontline assault, suppressive rifle. Interesting, that also seems to be like a flank attack. Um, and there's neutral defense. And then there's something that's locked. Well, looks like frontline assault is the way to go because it's gonna take out the most of them or whatever. Uh. So let's do that, I guess. Hello, Tender Verification. Yes, there's also battles. There's a lot more to this game than meets the eye. Oh, who the fuck is calling? I don't know that number. I'm not answering it. Actually, I probably should. Be right back. was a wrong number. Anyway, so what kind of judge has access to the armed services? Well, this seems to be like a flashback, but I guess later on we're going to be able to do this. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, let's do the frontline assault. Let's see what happens. Battle in progress. Frontline assault versus frontline assault. Okay, so took more damage than they did. Oh shit, there's more. Uh, yeah, net loss for us. Your brother fought like a man possessed. People were flocking to him. Uh, you know, this is like they're entering the camp, right? Let's, so let's do suppressive fire, maybe. Get him to back the fuck off. Hmm. 
Well, uh, that's really, really fucking bad. Uh. Okay. We had faith that reinforcements were rushing to help us, but we knew they would be too late. Fuck me. Maybe defense? It suppress the fire, even a thing with muskets. It is a strange way to uh, phrase it. Defense versus frontline assault, so will that help? Come on. Oh, bad, bad times. We are having bad times. A bayonet went right through me. I was bleeding out, and my friends were being felled by bullets one after another. I don't know. Uh, let's do a frontline assault. Fuck it. Charge in, boys! Frontline assault versus frontline assault. Yeah, we're gonna get wrecked here. Mm-hmm. Let's try again. I don't think they expected me to last this long. There's no more dialogue. And that's all she wrote. Your brother pulled me. I'm very sure that was the tutorial. Um, so, you know, whatever. Uh, um, let's see here. Uh, your brother pulled me from among the dead and dragged me far from the battlefield. The moment we reached the trees, a stray bullet caught him in the back. He died almost immediately, and I deserted. I thought I should thank you, his blood, and try to pay that debt with my actions. So Bruno has paid for his sins. Masson. He often said, Alexis, my brother, he is the only thing that matters. You must have been important to him. Mm, ew, yeah, they are not happy with uh, what I did in court there. Uh, with this Marie lives, you went against your family's demand. It's, it is doubtful they will give you even a minute of their time today. Yeah. Oh, and then that stack, so it's a really, really low. Yeah, we're at zero with my wife, zero with my oldest. My dad's kind of still okay with me. He's neutral about me. Uh... Nice! Killed them both! Hell yeah! What is it? Ah, uh, muskets. Okay, whoop! Let's get our people out of here. So, Clovis, you come here. Rashida. Jacques Louis David, do the same. Uh, yeah. That influence and I don't want to be near where the revolutionaries are. Um, I don't know. Freaking... See that maybe? Okay. So to the residents. Da -da -da -da. Trying to select the residents. I'm hitting A for accept, but nothing happens. Why can't I use the residents? The residents. I feel like this game of politics will end abruptly with the entry of Napoleon and his love of cannons. <laughs> well, maybe it'll end with Robespierre coming down. Oh, there's Gobel. The Archbishop of Paris right there. So we're only missing one person still in this hierarchy. He's, will they not even let me in my own home now? Is that what the hell is going on? Huh. 
What's in the notebook? Why does it want me to check the notebook? Yeah, bad relations, position and hierarchy, positions getting higher. Uh, well, I guess that's it then. Let's end the day. Come on. Oh, we hit Act 2. Oh, you know what then? Um, if we've hit Act 2... That actually seems like a good place to stop it. Now you guys are saying, well, that's a really short stream. I'm going to do another stream later on. A stream that uh, maybe will bring the once and final YouTube hammer down on me. But maybe like in a half hour. Uh, yeah, this is tragedy two streets away. People are calling for a judge. Okay, tons of stuff is happening right now. Um, okay, yeah. So so I guess we're going to kind of stop it early there. Uh, I'll, let me read some more Robespierre then uh, before we get before we get going here. Um, so, where is he? What if it was made to one day face Napoleon? Oh, maybe. Um, so, so this is a, this is a speech from, I believe this was, um, Robespierre's last speech, the speech he gave on the 8th of Thermidor, year two, that being July 26th, 1794. Uh, so this is, uh, let's see here. So this is just a little commentary here at the start. With this speech, Robespierre appeared at the Tribune of the Convention to, after a long absence. He appeals here to the Assembly, most of whose members he still believes to be pure against the conspiracy that is being spun against him. These were to prove to be Robespierre's last words in public before his arrest on the 9th of Thermidor. So the very next day he's arrested. Um, so I'm just going to read some of it. If someone proposed here to announce an amnesty for perfidious... Let's pull up the hierarchy, actually, while I say this. What's going on here? Pull up the damn hierarchy. Let's go... Oh, my fucking God. Oh, shit. All right, let's do this real quick. The guard hurriedly leads you to a crime scene where you see a crowd of furious people. They have surrounded several armed soldiers who are trying to repel the civilians from two men facing the wall. You soon learned that Commander Francois Hensriat has in Epsentina ordered the execution of felons who tried to steal weapons from a military transport. People are demanding your intercession in a fair trial, but it would be unwise to contest the orders of the commander, especially when elevated by your actions. Uh, oh shit, then. Um, let me think here. Uh, so we're we're going to order them freed. I am the law. People nod with a few uh, approval. The confused soldiers eventually listen to you and take the men to jail. Uh, however, do not delude yourself into thinking there will be no consequences for you, even if another judge is assigned to their trial. Someone will have to pay for the damage done to the commander's reputation. Okay. So, let's pull up the hierarchy. So this is from Rupspiao. Hold on. From his final speech. If someone proposed here to announce an amnesty for perfidious deputies and to place the crimes of any representative under the protection of a decree, a blush would appear on all our faces. But to leave loyal representatives with the duty of denouncing crimes while exposing them, on the other hand, to the rage of an incident alliance, if they dare to fulfill that duty, is that not even an even more revolting disorder? It is more than protecting crime. It is sacrificing virtue to it. People! Remember that if justice does not reign with absolute authority in the Republic, and if that word does not signify love of equality and the homeland, then liberty is just a vain word. People whom they fear, whom they flatter and despise, you who are acknowledged as sovereign and treated as slave, remember that where justice does not reign, the passions of measure stress do, and the people has changed its shackles, not its destiny. Remember that there lives in your midst a league of scoundrels that struggles against public virtue, that has more influence over your affairs than you your, have yourself, that fears and flatters you in the mass, but proscribes you individually in the hearts of our good citizens. Remember that instead of sacrificing this swarm of scoundrels to your well-being, your enemies want to sacrifice you to a handful of scoundrels. Uh, the authors of all our ills and the sole obstacles to public prosperity. And I'm going to skip over a bunch, but basically, 
This is the end. This is the final words of Robespierre in public. I was born to fight crime, not control it. The time has not arrived for men of substance to be able to serve the homeland with impunity. Defenders of liberty will just be outlaws for as long as the horde of scoundrels predominates. And uh, with that, we will uh, stop it uh, for the day. I'm going to do another stream. We're going to do a brand new campaign later on tonight, so keep an eye out for that. Um, probably, I'd say in the next hour, ten minutes at most. Hour, ten minutes at most. That would be 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at the late... Uh, the uh the latest um anyway see you later everybody bye bye